Welcome to the Malix Minute, ladies and gentlemen, starring the Markley Brothers as Malix, Linus, and the Snuffle Fungus. I like the new theme song. I'm dancing, I'm dancing. Linus, what do you think of the new theme song? Eh, it'll do. I don't understand what the problem is, Malix. They're just phone calls. That's because you're not flesh and blood like me. You can't feel pain. Actually, I can, but what's so painful about debt collectors calling anyway? Ah, oh, you're hopeless. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. I must apologize for Malik's behavior. He's been receiving some phone calls lately. For some reason, these phone calls have begun to make him a little funny. And not the funny kind of funny, either. Here comes another call. I can feel it. What? You can't possibly- Ah. Uh. Can somebody else get it? No, it's funniest if you do it. <laughs> Hello. Hello, this is John Doe from Grim Harvest Enterprises. May I speak to Mr. Homestead Decay, please? Why, Johnny John Johnson? Why must you torment me so? I'm just doing my job, sir. We could end this right now if you'd just, you know, let me speak to Mr. Homestead Decay. Okay, you know what? You win. And don't pretend to be him again. Your fake voices are terrible. No, no, no. Here, you tell me all about Homestead Decay, and I'll go find him for you. Right now! I'll just go on an epic quest if need be. Hmm. Your offer has merit. Okay, I will tell you everything there is to know about Homestead Decay. This ought to be good. His favorite color is candy apple green. His first dog was named Chocolate, which led to an incident that left him emotionally scarred for life. He's repeatedly sworn that he'll never get another pet as long as he lives. Oh, that's sad. I'm gonna stop taking notes until something relevant comes along. Oh, and when he was five years old, he shook hands with the tallest man in the world. And he tells everybody that he lost his pinky toe in the war. But really, it was a freak dishwasher accident. Yep, those dishwashers. He's a very lonely man, too. He's always wanted friendship, but never found anybody who could stand to be near him. Johnny John Johnson, are you talking about yourself? Why? Do, no, what makes you think that? Malix always says not to talk about what other people are feeling because you can't know for sure. Unless you just happen to be the person you're talking about. This rabbit trail won't get us anywhere. So wait, Malix, are you saying this whole time Johnny John Johnson has been annoying us in a desperate bid for attention? And friendship, yes. So, you figured it out. Good for you. So, can we just hang up now and pretend this never happened? Oh, no. See, in my database here, there really is a homestead decay, and he really does owe this company money. I don't understand. Don't you see? This master plan has been in the works for years. First, I cleverly sign up for a credit card under a fake name, placing all your contact information on the account. Second, I max out that credit card. Third, I sign up for another credit card with your contact information because the first credit limit wasn't devious enough. Fourth, I get a job at the collection agency that contracts with my own bank. Fifth, I hire your paper boy to collect my credit card bills out of your mail and destroy them. Sixth, I place myself in a position to work on my own collections case. Seventh, I call you. Eighth, I call you again. Ninth, I call you a third time. <laughs> we get the point already. Do you? Yeah, we do. Please transfer me to your supervisor. What? Reject my plain-spoken, affectionate bid for friendship? Spit on the hand that calls you? Please, just transfer me to your supervisor. He'll never believe you over me. Never! <gasps> oh no, you like him more than me, don't you? That seems likely. You'll become his friend, and then he'll believe you. Something like that. Just put him on. I'm s I'm sorry, sir. what? The, the quality control dep No, whatever do you mean? I'm- <gasps> I'm what? Excuse me, sir. We're terribly sorry about all this. My quality control department just notified me of some of the contents of this conversation, and frankly, I'm annoyed. <laughs> you can say that again. Oh, sorry. I said, excuse me, sir. We're terribly sorry about all this. My quality control department just notified me of some of the contents of this conversation, and frankly, I'm annoyed. Right. Basically, I just wanted to placate you enough that you wouldn't press charges against the company without actually changing anything about what we do or how we operate. What about that Johnny John Johnson fellow? Canned him. Yeah, he's gone. Said to tell you that he'd never forgive you for spurning his friendship. And something about hunting you down and tormenting you for life. Okay, well, thanks for your time. Also, I just thought you should know that I'm suffering from a degenerative neurological disorder and I'll be dead in six months. In case, I don't know, you wanted to be friends or something. Uh, 
I, um, well, you know, I... No, okay, I get it. Who wants to be friends with the dying guy? You people are all alike. Fine, I don't want to be friends with you anyway. Uh, bye? Well, want to exchange some witty repartee? No, no, I, I don't. Today's episode is copyright 2008 by Alex Markley. This was a production of the Malix Media Network. Please visit us online at malixminute.com for production credits, extras, and a complete archive of classic episodes. God bless and have a great day. All right, Mr. Jeremiah, time for your dinner. No, I won't stand for it. Now, Mr. Jeremiah, you have to eat something. Oh, really? When did you figure that one out? I'll just leave this right here, okay? No, no, don't leave it here. Don't leave me alone with... with... All right, food, I got my eye on you. You so much as move a muscle and you'll get one in the kisser.